Hi everyone, this video will be talking about Alfa Romeo's oil vapor separator canister. Some version of these devices were found on practically every Alfa since the 1970s, and they were all constructed using similar metals. Anyone who owns a classic Alfa will want to watch this video. In this video I'm working on a Series 4 Spider, Montronic Fuel Injection. However, the issues and solutions are the same for all versions of Spiders. What is an oil vapor separator? OVSs are essentially oil catch cans that drain oil vapor condensation back into the crankcase. There are some really good videos about the differences between oil catch cans and oil vapor separators on YouTube that I'll recommend in the description. The way Alpha OVSs work is air flows from the cam cover into the OVS and exits through the lower tube after being pushed through a brass mesh. The mesh is what does all the work. As the air vapor is passing through the mesh, the heavier particles of oil condense on the mesh and eventually drip down to the bottom of the canister. The clean air from the cam cover is returned to the air intake plenum, while the condensed oil gets returned to the crankcase. The reason why it's important for all Alpha owners to replace their old OVS with a new one, or to make one yourself, is because the Alpha OVS was made of thin sheets of steel that over time rusted from the inside out causing major sediment clogs in the oil return lines and increased crankcase pressure from decreased airflow. Here are some images of OVSs that were taken apart by various Alpha owners. You can see that the brass mesh has completely broken apart or old crusty oil has clogged the mesh screens decreasing airflow. Richard aka Divot and Trali, a contributor to the Alpha Romeo bulletin board, took his OVS apart to see how it was designed and where the failure points are. Then he went about designing a replica out of rust-proof brass. His kit is a collection of brass pieces that need to be soldered together and will closely resemble, and I think function, as well as the original intended to function. When purchasing the kit, he provides this instructional diagram showing you what pieces need to be soldered where. He also provides written instruction on the most logical sequences for putting this together. I mostly followed his instructions and it came out exactly as advertised. The tools you'll need for this are a torch, 50-50 solder, water-soluble flux paste, sandpaper, and a vise. First step is to solder joints A and B together. In order to center the joint, Richard provides a little dowel labeled F in the picture. I ended up doing this off camera because I was so excited to try and solder, I forgot to press record. But here's the finished joint. Next, we'll solder joint A and B onto D and H. Part D contains brass mesh that does all the filtering while part H is the exit tube. At the moment, part H just floats in the mesh, but it will become secured once we get further down in the project. As you'll see in this video, I'm new to soldering and this was my first soldering project. I definitely used too much flux and at times didn't get the brass hot enough so the solder just stuck to the brass instead of flowing. Over time I got somewhat better, but I was most concerned with creating a watertight, airtight seal. So while it doesn't look good, it performs perfectly. Solder the short oil return nipple, part I, onto part E. I was pretty worried that the little tube and solder would not be durable enough and could easily break off, but to my surprise, soldering is very durable. The next step requires shaping part G to the circumference of part C, the main body. This was a lot harder than I thought it would be and requires paying attention to the angle you hold part G. It was very difficult to get the taper just right and in the end, I didn't have the most perfect joint, but I filled in the gaps with solder and it surprisingly came out perfectly. Richard provides another dowel to help secure it, and you'll need that. I put a towel in there so that way if any of the solder fell, it wouldn't go onto the main body. Now we'll assemble the main body, part C, with the sub-assembly, part A, B, D, and H. 
You'll need to chamfer the top edge of part C about 70 degrees in order to better match the curves of part B. Then sand clean, add the flux and start soldering. As you can see I really went overboard on the solder, but I was more concerned about leaks than looks. Now slide part E onto part H, the exit tube, and solder it to the main body. If you have a Bosch fuel injected spider, you'll need to attach the elbow. As you can see, I struggled a lot with trying to get a clamp to hold these two pieces together. I think a small C clamp would do the trick better, but I didn't have one. I also had a difficult time getting the joint to be flush, so I used a tremendous amount of solder to secure this joint and prevent oil weeping. It looks pretty bad, but it's actually airtight. Now you're all done. As you can see, I checked the orientation to make sure it was all correct. Next, you'll want to cut off the bracket from your old VS or make your own. I chose to Dremel mine off. You can attach the bracket in several different ways. I decided to use JB Weld rather than heat up the steel to get it hot enough to fuse onto the brass. I was also afraid that might create too much heat and upset the solder brass joints. However, Richard in the uh, instructions recommends that you solder the steel bracket onto the brass. You want to clean up the rust and paint, deburr any sharp edges, and prep for attachment. It looks like total trash, but I'm not going for looks right now. I'm just going for function. Later down the road, I might make my own bracket or spot weld this. Time to put your new OVS in the car. The most interesting part of this whole setup is the oil return tube. Alpha made the tube just long enough to have a little bend in it. The bend is supposed to collect oil and prevent gases from coming out of the engine and into the OVS. It makes more sense when you see it. I know some newer cars with a similar setup have a check valve. I might invest in researching that later down the road. However, for right now, I'm just going to put it back together the way it was designed. I started the car, checking for any oil leaks or engine running issues. I have decided not to paint my OVS so that if there are any oil leaking issues in the future, I'd be able to spot them easily. I'll probably paint it down the road, but right now I want to leave it clean so I can detect any oil leaking. Since installing the OVS on the car, I've put about 150 miles on it, and there are still no oil leakings anywhere. Safe to say this project was a complete success. This was a very fun project and easy to do, and I believe anyone with an alpha can do this project. Thanks for watching, and happy alpha driving.